Hello everyone, what's up? In this video I'm going to show you a summary of my entire painting and weathering process for this awesome Grim Chart B1 by Grim Prince. I will concentrate on what I think are the main highlights in the project and as usual I'll end up with my conclusions and recommendations. As a bonus, I will also be sharing with you two new weathering tools I recently acquired and which although cheap and cheerful could be game changers. So without further ado, my fellow treadheads, let's start. Some of you will already have seen pics of the Grim Char B1 in its German red-brown undercoat. However, that was by no means how I started this time around. The very first step was applying two coats of Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000, the rattle can version, which is an amazing filler primer by Gunze, also known as Mr. Hobby. When that cured, I gave the areas with the worst layer lines some sanding, but it still wasn't perfect. After that, I still applied my usual black AK primer. These zenithal highlights that you see here were just for the photos. Then and only then did I go with the Rotbraun, which in this case was the AK Real Colors Rotbraun 8012. Believe it or not, there are three different Rotbraun colors. After all this prep, it was time to apply some texture to the tank with the ammo anti-slip paste. As you know, I already have a detailed video on that, so let's just move on, shall we? Next, it was time for what you already know is one of my favorite steps, applying a liquid mask. This time around I must say that it didn't work as well as it should. Part of that was lack of practice on my part. The other factor is that this pot of liquid mask is over two years old now, and I was having to scoop up the stuff from the bottom, which I think had gotten too thick. I'm gonna have to buy a new pot. Anyways, it wasn't amazing like it's been sometimes in the past, but it did the job. For the green base coat, I went with an ad hoc mix of Tamiya Olive Green, Real Colors Yellow, and a Real Colors of White. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it worked pretty well, and as usual, I then applied some highlights with just a lighter version of the same mix. Then it was time for the fun stuff, I'm going to tan with my hardest brush. Again, I wasn't super impressed with the results, but they were okay. Next, it was time to start with the camo. I looked at a ton of different historical camo schemes of the actual Char B1, and finally I settled for one that is showcased on the Tamiya kit box. This time I opted to spray the entire model with chipping fluid, rather than masking first. This way I could take care of any overspray, and since I'd be using a water-based acrylic, yes you heard correctly, for the camo stripes, I knew that this would make it super safe. For this I chose Dunkelgalb Light Base by Amo, I decided to take my time and apply my little camo putty sausages, one section at a time, rather than over the entire model, as I always used to do. This worked way better, so now I know how to do it properly. Even if you have two tints, and I do, I feel that this method is far more efficient, as the putty won't start glooping all over the place as it always does after like half an hour or so. As you can see, airbrushing the camo worked really well and I must say I really enjoyed it this time. In fact, I think it was my favorite step in the entire build. With the camo done, it was time to get the model ready for decals. As always, I applied Tamiya X22 all over the model. When that dried, I applied Tamiya Mark Fit Strong to all the panels to be decaled and I let that dry for around 15 minutes prior to decal application. Now I'm pretty proud of my very unusual choice of decals for this build. These are leftover decals from the Spanish Civil War Panzer I, which I completed exactly two years ago now. Funny that this tank was in 1 16th scale, and yet they fit really well. Well, all of them were from this set, except the tiny ginger one near the engine. That one is from an AK set for 1 24th scale dioramas. Anyways, the decal application worked well, as did my brutal weathering methods. As always, I used a combination of Mark Fit Strong, Super Strong, a pair of tweezers, and a sand in stick. No mercy. Then it was time for washes. 
Since I'm always using enamels and neglecting my pretty large collection of oil paints, I decided to give the latter a go. And since I'm always doing like super careful pin washes, I thought, what the heck, let's go really crazy this time. Therefore, I decided to do a sludge wash instead, and not just any sludge wash, but one with mixed in pigments. The funny thing is that I'm so used to doing pin washes that I just couldn't bring myself to showering the model with my oil and pigments mix. Look at me doing this carefully when I really, really shouldn't. <laughs> Anyways, eventually I managed to go more carefree with this stuff and gave the entire model a good dose of dirt. This happened literally the day before I went on holidays, so I knew that I had to speed up the process as much as possible. Therefore, I got the hair dryer out and one hour later, it was time to remove the excess wash. For this job, I decided to try two new weapons in my weathering arsenal. These are eyeshadow brush applicators, apparently. And as you can see, they're basically a brush with a teardrop-shaped sponge at the end. They were 9 euros for 20 of them on Amazon. The second weapon I wanted to show you are these triangular makeup sponges, which have a super fine structure and also work great. These in turn were 9 euros for 48 sponges. Now both AK and Ammo make similar products, some of which you may have seen me use already, but those are way more expensive. So consider this my secret tip in today's video guys, highly recommended tools. So it was time to put those tools to the test and with them my crazy sludge wash. As you can see my first pass with the triangle sponge worked quite well. It was picking up a lot of the excess wash, like it should. The decal, however, remained heavily tinted, and the texture I added to the tag had also picked up a lot of the wash. That area, therefore, I decided to clean up a bit more with thinner and a brush. Not a problem. In any case, even areas which had been really flooded could still be cleaned up without any thinner. This was probably made possible by the generous clear coat I had applied prior and by the fact that I used oils this time and not enamels, which are always stickier. As you can see, the brush sponge also worked great, allowing me to get into more cramped spaces without any issues. All in all, I was happy. But as Jose from our Discord would always say, that tag is too clean, so this is where track rust comes in. The idea was to apply the pigment now, before the oil wash was completely cured, targeting recesses and places where this could accumulate. After removing some of the excess with this fan brush, I was left with a subtle but appreciable effect, which I decided to reinforce. It was time for a pin wash with medium rust deposits by AK. After some minor cleaning up, you guessed correctly, I got the truck's rust pigments out again. Using the much lighter enamel rust deposits as a fixer, I then reapplied some of this darker pigment all over those details. Now this was starting to look the way I wanted. All I did after that was some streaking, some suit effects, and painting the few lenses or lights that this tank has. Those final steps I did off camera, because by this stage I was racing against the clock and I always work in a more relaxed way when I'm not recording. Yes, even after 97 videos, can you believe that? That's right, we're close to 100 videos now. That will be quite the landmark, don't you think? And speaking of landmarks, this video is also our fourth members only video. Not too shabby, eh? <laughs> Now let me thank you guys again for your support, and not only financially. The avalanche of feedback, encouragement, and really good ideas that you've sent me over the last few weeks on our Discord VIP channel has really made a huge positive difference for me. That's all from me for now, folks. But remember, keep it up and weather it out.